Alright, I'm going to warn you about this blog called Eternal Life Blog. They are teaching a workspace salvation, they are denying eternal security, and just proving that you can't be non-dispensational and be saved. They're doing an article here calling out Chick Tracks, and of course I'm not a supporter of Chick Tracks. They have a lot of errors and just out and out weird doctrine, especially with their defense of the pagan trinity. But this Eternal Life Blog, they teach conditional security and are non-dispensational. You're going to see that right here. They write, Chick Tracks do not sound, beware. And they claim they teach easy believism, which is not true. Chick Tracks does not teach easy believism. They don't give a track to say. But when they say for salvation, they write, uh, we all forget about the following in terms of salvation. This is what they're saying you have to do for salvation. Repent, turn from evil, or perish. And they quote Luke 13, 3 to 5, and they quote 2 Peter 3, 9, 3, 9. And they'll say you have to turn from evil. So basically, Jesus Christ didn't pay for your sins, you have to turn from evil. They re repent and believe the gospel, repent towards God and faith towards Jesus Christ, enduring until the end to be saved. Matthew 20, they, they quote Matthew 10, 22, Hebrews 3, 14, and Revelation 10, or 2, verse 10 to 11. So again, you see they're non-dispensational. Matthew chapter 10 is not even dispensationally for us. It is in the time of Jacob's trouble. He, same thing with Hebrews. Hebrews is not even written to Christians, and neither is Revelation. They're written in the time of Jacob's trouble. But again, they, they are not dispensational, so they take books that are for the future and apply it to today. And again, you have to endure until the end to be saved. Okay? And then proving the non dispensational. Again, you say, oh, you can be non dispensational and be saved. No, you can't. You know, as, as Brian correctly points out, this is proof of that. Because you can't just lump the Bible all together and say, that, oh, it's all for us. They also write, bring him forth fruit so he won't be severed from Christ and thrown into the fire. So basically, Jesus paid for your sins, but you have to bring forth fruit. So it's work salvation. You're working your way to heaven. You're having to endure. You're having to bring forth fruit. They're work salvationists. The danger of becoming lukewarm and getting vomited out of the body of Christ. Revelation 3.16. Again, who is Revelation written to? It's written to Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Not even for us today. But they're jumping back and forth. They write, holding on to what so no man will take your crown. Revelation 3.11. And again, who is this written to? It's in the time of Jacob's trouble because you have to endure until the end in the time of Jacob's trouble. Not disowning Jesus, for he will disown you, all who disown him. Matthew 10, 33. And again, not even dispensationally for us. This is not even written to us. It's in the time of Jacob's trouble. And it's funny, because they'll go back and forth. Uh, they won't even quote Ephesians 1, 13 or Ephesians 4, 30. Uh, sowing to please the Spirit, to reap eternal life. Galatians chapter 6, verse 8 and 9. Not even what the verse is talking about. Keeping yourself pure. So basically, you have to keep yourself pure. Jesus Christ didn't pay for your sins. You have to keep yourself pure. You have to endure until the end. They're works salvationists. They're teaching Roman Catholicism. This is exactly what Catholics believe. That you have to endure. You have to keep yourself pure. You have to die in a state of holiness or die in a state of grace. It's, it's exactly what the Catholics believe. And it's kind of funny because they say you have to you have, you have to hold on to the crown, you know, take your crown. Um, where does Paul ever say we have a crown we have to keep? Okay? Again, just proving you can't be non-dispensational and be saved. And they go down just attacking Chick Tracks. And like Chick's King James onlyism. So they're not even King James. So it makes sense that they don't even... Because even if you were a dispensational, if you don't believe the King James Bible, you're still going to teach works salvation. Because the modern Bibles teach a works-based salvation. And then they, they're just jumping all over the place. And uh, that's the end of the article. But I want to give a warning about this blog, Eternal Life Blog. They are work salvationists. You know, it's funny they write former Catholic while well, they're teaching Roman Catholicism. You know, it's funny how they can't even see that. But again, it goes back to this thing. Did Jesus pay for your sins or are you having to work your way to heaven? Which is what these guys are saying. You have to repent and turn from evil and you also have to repent and believe the gospel. You know, turning from evil. So basically Jesus paid for your sins but you have to turn from evil. Okay? You know, enduring until the end to be saved. They're jumping all over the place. But let me show you what the Bible says about salvation. Here's some verses that they will not quote to you because it destroys their whole their whole heretical work salvation and their self-righteousness. Ephesians 1.13, In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So if you're sealed, can you lose it? Do you become unsealed? No, you can't. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse... Yeah, yeah, oh, chapter 1, sorry, wrong verse. 2 Corinthians. And again, the reason why I come out hard against these people who teach this, this conditional security is they're self-righteous. They're thinking that, okay, Jesus paid for my sins. They're coming to the cross and saying, okay, Jesus paid for my sins, but I have to work my way to heaven. They're, they're self-righteous. 
2 Corinthians 1, verse 21 and 22. Now he which established us with you in Christ hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Again, we're sealed. We see this theme over and over again of us being sealed, we're preserved. It's a, it's a thing that's taught in the Pauline epistles. And again, who is Paul? Who is Paul? Paul's our apostle. See, in Romans chapter 11, verse 13, in Romans chapter 15, verse 16, Paul is, says how he's the apostle to, apostle to the Gentiles. So in terms of our gospel, it should come from Paul. And there's, there's some stuff in the gospel of John, too, because John is transitional from law to grace. But Paul is who we should be getting our gospel from, not, not, the, uh, not the revelation, which is for Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. But again, they prove you can't be non-dispensational and be saved. Ephesians 4.30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. What is the day of redemption? It's the rapture. Or, the, or as Brian pointed out, the resurrection. So you're sealed until that day. So again, do you become unsealed? No, you don't. Uh, here's, a good, here's a good verse that kicks their self-righteousness. Philippians 3.9, and being found, in, or, yeah, and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, kind of like those guys, you'd, they wanted to have their own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. You don't have your own righteousness. Titus, I'm, I'm trying to get this through this video quite fast because there's there's so many false prophets out there. Again, the Bible says in, in the end times there'll be doctrines of devils. This eternal, this not eternal, this conditional security is doctrines of devils. It's one of the end times heresies. Uh, Titus 3.5, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So it's not by your own works of righteousness, but you're having to continue in holiness and having to endure and having to, you know, do all these things. You're having to keep your crown. You're having to not deny Jesus. You know, it's all these things you have to do. It, like I said, it's Roman Catholicism. It's a works-based salvation. It's, it's no different than what the Catholics believe. Um, there is 1 Timothy chapter, I think it's yeah, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verses eight and nine: Be thou, be not thou, therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Verse nine: Who hath saved us? Who hath saved us? We don't save ourselves; He saved us, and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. See, Jesus Christ gives us salvation. It's not according to our righteousness or our works. Something these work salvation Catholics don't understand, because they're having to do, do all these. They're, they're having to attend mass. They're having to, you know, die in a state of grace. Which, like I said earlier, is exactly what these conditional security people believe. They have to die in a state of holiness, just like the Catholics have to die in a state of grace to be saved. Ephesians two eight and nine, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. Salvation is not what you do. It's not your righteousness. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So, if salvation is not of yourselves, then how do you how do you say a single? Oh, you have to you have to do this. You have to do that. It's not of yourselves. It's it's God gives you salvation. And again, I'm trying to get through this video quite fast because I have other things to do. But uh, John chapter six, good verse on eternal security. Uh, another good one for eternal security. John chapter six, uh, verse. 39. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all so that, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but shall raise it up at the last day. So Jesus says he'll lose nothing. But according to these guys, I guess he will lose you if you don't endure in holiness, if you don't do this, you don't do that, you don't have to, you, have to, you, can't, you can't deny Jesus. Well, Peter, Peter denied Jesus three times. So would Peter lose his salvation? Ridiculous. John chapter 10, verse 28 to 29. And I give unto them eternal life. See, Jesus, He gives us a life. We, we don't. We don't give ourselves eternal life by our holiness. And they should never. Sorry, and they shall never perish. And that, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Here's a good one to kick, kick the Trinity as well. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Notice how in verse 28 He says, "They shall never perish." So if we could lose our salvation, then we could perish. But we're not. We, we will never perish, according to Jesus. And notice how he says, "Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand." But then in the next verse, he says, "He won't pluck them out of my Father's hand." Then he says, "I and my Father are one." What does this mean? Well, Jesus and the Father are not two persons; they are one being. Because he says, "My hand," then next verse, "My Father's hand." So what are they? Like Brian pointed out, are they playing catch the Christian or something? No, they they are the same being. You know, John fourteen talks about how the Father is in Jesus Christ. Uh, again, not going to go through that in this video. John chapter 17, verse 21 to 22. 
that they and here's another good one to kick the Trinity. That they may be all that 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 may all be one, as thou Father art in me, the Father's in Jesus Christ, and I in thee, that they may also be one in us, one in us, they're one, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Look at verse twenty two. And the glory which thou givest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Hmm. They are one. Jesus and the Father are one. Go kick in the Trinity, the Catholic Trinity. But John chapter or John chapter seventeen, verse eleven to twelve. Here's a good one proving eternal security. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come unto, I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through mine own name those that thou sorry, those whom thou hast given me, not the best reader, uh, that they may that they may be one, even as or yeah, they, sorry, that yeah, not not the best at reading. Again, not the best reader. I, I, again, I'm not good at reading anything. I'm not the best reader for in general. That they may be one as we are. Hmm. Jesus and the Father are one. I and my Father are one. So how does that work if they're two persons? Verse 12, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in my name. Those that thou givest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. So we're kept in Jesus' name. So if we can lose our salvation, then we're not kept in his name, and we could be lost. He says none of them is lost. You know, These are verses these, these, these uh, Catholic, you know, conditional security Catholics won't show you. They will not. They will not deal with these verses with a ten-foot pole. John chapter five, verse number twenty-four. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. We will not come into condemnation again. Back in John chapter ten, they shall never perish. But I guess according to these conditional security Catholics, we can perish because we can we can come into condemnation if we don't endure until the end to be saved. But think of Matthew chapter ten and Matthew twenty four. Who who is who would have to endure? Who is it written to? Well, because Matthew ten it ties into Matthew chapter twenty four because they are very identical. Well, who is who is Jesus speaking to in these passages? Matthew twenty four, verse sixteen. Then let them sorry. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Uh, Judea. What are Christians doing in Judea? It's also worth noting that uh, Christians didn't, didn't appear to act to the book of Acts. The first Christians were not mentioned to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 11 to be specific. So, who is Jesus speaking to? He's speaking to Jews. Then let them, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Look at verse 20. But pray, but, sorry, the, but pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Uh, what are Christians doing observing the Sabbath? Paul never says we have to observe the Sabbath. It's been done away with. But it's talking to the Jews, because they're still observing the Sabbath, because they think we're still under the law. They don't believe in the New Testament. And again, who is Jesus speaking to? He can't be speaking to Christians, because Christians didn't appear until the book of Acts. So, he's speaking to Jews in this passage. Because what are Christians doing in Judea, and what are we doing observing the Sabbath day? We're not. That's what he's speaking to in this passage. Another good kick on... Conditional security of Romans 8 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. And they'll say, See, you have to, see, you have to walk after the, the spirit. Uh, that's, not, that's not the context of the passage. Okay? The context is saying there's no condemnation. For those who walk after the flesh but after the spirit, how do you walk after the spirit? You get saved. Then you're in the spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. So, again, just they'll take stuff out of context. But again, there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. But I guess according to these guys, there is condemnation because you can still lose your salvation. You know, now a common verse these guys will twist. Actually, two common verses these guys will twist to prove conditional security is where is the verse? Oh, here it is. Galatians 5:4. Christ has become of no effect unto you, where whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. And they'll say, see, you can fall from grace. Okay, what's the context of the passage? He's saying Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. People were trying to go back under the law, and Paul was saying, okay, if you're doing that, then you've fallen from grace. Then, you know, then Christ died, died for no reason. That's what he's talking about. He's not saying you've fallen from grace as in you've lost your salvation. He's saying if you're going back under the law, then basically Christ died for no reason. You know, what was the point? He basically, it says Christ has become of no effect unto you. If you're under the law, then Christ died for no reason. That's what he's talking about. So, that, that, so again, they're twisting the scripture. He's not saying you've lost your salvation. Galatians, or 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. Another common one they'll twist. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, which covers sodomites, by the way. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, for all you people who say, oh, the New Testament doesn't condemn sodomy, yeah, it does. Uh, verse 10, neither nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Look at verse 11. But such were some of you, but you are washed, you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. But those say, see, if you do these things, you won't inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, what is the kingdom of God? Romans 14, 17 tells us what the kingdom of God is. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. As Brian pointed out, it's spiritual fellowship with God. So, because though they're confusing heaven with the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is basically, you're having spiritual fellowship with God, and heaven is basically the afterlife. I'll put it that way. So again, twisting the passage and changing the, the definition of the kingdom of God. It, it is not heaven. And they'll say, well, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are both in the book of Matthew, and, and Jesus is, is busy talking about them both. Yeah, because they are both available. Because the king was on the earth, Jesus Christ. He was on the earth, so the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are both available. But when he leaves the earth, it's a different, so, different story. Uh, oh yeah. Also, there's Second Timothy 4.18, another, another good kick against conditional security, which is one of the many doctrines of devils in these last days. Uh, this is Paul speaking, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We're preserved. He'll preserve us unto his heavenly kingdom. But I guess you, I guess, I guess you are no longer preserved if you're not, if you, do, if you don't endure in holiness. I guess you're no longer preserved. It's ridiculous. Um, one last. Now, I can't, yeah, one, one last thing I want to point out is these guys will say, "Well, Jesus Christ didn't pay for all your sins," which is what the Catholics will say. Okay. If you have a King James Bible, obviously follow along. Acts chapter thirteen, verse number thirty-nine. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So when you believe in Jesus, when you get saved, you're justified from all things. But I guess according to these guys, you're not justified from all things. You know, they're, they're calling God a liar, according to these scriptures. Titus chapter 2, there's four verses that deal with this thing of Jesus paying for all your sins. I'm going to go through all four of them. Titus 3.13 Looking for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of a great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Hmm. Not looking for the Antichrist, as the post-tribbers do, but looking for the appearing of Jesus Christ. The resurrection, the rapture, as it's commonly known. Verse 14, Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, to purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Again, all iniquity. When these people say, oh, Jesus didn't pay for all your sins, they're calling him a liar, because he said he paid for all iniquity. Titus chapter 2, verse uh, 13. I was looking for the verse. And you, being dead in your sins, and the circumcision of your flesh, hath ye quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Again, all. All sin is forgiven. Now, the last verse, because, again, there's four verses that prove this. First John chapter, or First John 1, 7. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. So again, all sin. We see this thing of all sin, all iniquity, all things. So people who say that Jesus didn't pay for all your sins, you have to do this, you have to do that, they're calling God a liar. So don't be deceived by these uh, non-dispensational conditional security heretics. They're trying to take away your, your um, assurance of salvation. That's what it comes down to. And they're self-righteous. They're trying to work their way to heaven. Because basically they'll say, well, if we don't work for our salvation, we have to work to keep our salvation. It's still work salvation, because you're having to work to, to affect your salvation. So it's still, you're still working for your salvation. It's no different than what the Catholics believe. Of uh, You get saved, and then you have to continue in this. You have to die in a state of grace. So don't be deceived by these heretics. Again, conditional security is one of the many heresies, one of the end times doctrines of devils that is talked about in, I think it's 2 Timothy, or 1 Timothy chapter 4. So, don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye.